Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. And first of all, I wanna thank you so much for purchasing my course on creating hidden creatures in the forest. This is something that I've always loved ever since I was a little kid running around in the woods on my own. I always imagined that there was a hidden world, hidden creatures that we didn't know about. And as I've become an adult and using my tools, uh, working digitally with Photoshop and those sorts of things, I've been able to kind of recreate what I've always had in my head. It's a very cool, uh, fun exercise to do and I wanna share it with you in this course. So why don't we go ahead and uh, I'm gonna take you down through some of my favorite areas here in Central Florida where I live and I'm gonna show you where I get my inspiration. Let's go. So the first thing I think about when I go out into the woods and, I'm, uh, and I wanna find or imagine hidden creatures, I start looking around at all the textures, all the different leaves, the ferns, the, uh, the branches, the trees. I look at all of these, they all have different forms that can inform you into how to design a creature. One of the greatest things that I've been inspired by is, is mimicry with animals and insects, how they've evolved over millions of years to look like other things, like a katydid can look like a leaf or a moth can look like bark on a tree. And I use those ideas to apply them to new creatures. How maybe a fern over here can be underneath can be a creature that's hidden, you know, within that, that, that bog over there. Or maybe some of the litter on the, on the ground, some of those ground clutter, the leaves are hiding a creature that's blending in there. These are the things where I start to get my inspiration and I love to photograph and sketch all the inspiration that I get out here and take all of that and bring it back to the studio and then begin to design my creatures. It's so much fun. Let's go check out some more places. Now look at this. This is really cool. It's so, so, so simple. We've all seen it before, but here's a tree that's fallen over and you get all of these great forms coming up out of the ground that you can imagine a creature being part of that, you know? And underneath also, not just the, uh, the, the form being a creature, but you have this den right here where the tree has fallen over and the, there's a hollow down here where I can imagine something living. There's so much richness, so many textures, so many forms that you can pull out of this. And one of the other things I love to do while I'm out here is take photographs of not just the forms, but get in close and get photos of all the textures because I can go back to the studio and use those textures to photo bash right onto the characters that I'm creating and make them feel so lifelike you'd, you'd swear they were real. It's so cool. Now this, this is really cool. Here's a big tree that's gone over and we've got a huge root ball and there's so much form in here. It's so incredible. Why don't we just pan up here and have a look? This is absolutely incredible. I love all of the form, all of the, the twists and turns. You can see so many creatures in here if you just push your imagination. If you haven't figured it out yet, this whole course is really about finding forms and pushing your imagination and finding the life and the characters and the creatures and all those crazy things that you can sometimes see in a knotted piece of wood or a piece of dirt. It's so much fun to do. And so once again, I love texture. There's so much texture out here in nature. Look at this fallen log, this fallen tree. We were just on the other side where we were looking at the bottom of the root ball, but the bark that it has, the textures are so wonderful. You can use this for a troll's skin or, or anything. I mean, any kind of creature you can imagine. And down here, here's an even older log that's lost its bark, but you can see all this moss texture and, and greenery that's growing on the log itself. This creates some beautiful skin textures that we can put onto a creature. Look at all this. It's absolutely gorgeous. And all the richness of color and texture and all of this, I really get excited when I see this kind of stuff because now I can go in and photograph all of this and use this as my inspiration for skin textures on different creatures. This is so incredible.
Okay, so now we're in a really cool part of the forest. Where we are now, we're getting low and, and we're getting closer to water. And so the foliage is changing. And so we're covered with all these live oaks all over the place. And what's really cool about live oaks here in Florida is that they get these guys growing all over them. They're air plants or epiphytes. They're not parasitic. They actually live on their own. They just attach themselves to the trees and they live off the moisture in the air. And it's very, very cool. You can see how easily you could think of these turning into a creature. Uh, and one of the other things I thought about is the way these live oaks kind of stretch and run all over the forest. I always imagine that there is a culture of little elves that looked like these and they lived up in the trees and we call them limb runners. And that's their culture and they run through these forests and we've just never been able to see them before. And so maybe I'll get some, uh, footage of some of these plants right here, these epiphytes, and we can turn them into something. That'll be really cool. See, this is one of the things I love about coming out here. You never know what you're going to find. Up here, we've got a red-shouldered hawk and this beautiful, beautiful area. I love walking the rivers here in Florida because you never know what wildlife you're going to find. You might find otters, you might find alligators, all kinds of beautiful bird life. All of that can inspire you to help you with your creatures. I just see some vultures flying around over here. But it's really, really a great inspirational thing to do, to get out into nature and, and just explore and let all of that just kind of soak into you and inspire you to go back to the studio and create. Now here's something really cool. I've been walking along the river here and there's all kinds of really cool forms and shapes and all kinds of wonderful textures. And, and I came across this deadfall, this tree, these trees that have the, where the bank has eroded away from them. These are all old oak trees. And you can see these forms as if they're bent over laying on the shore. I can definitely see these as creatures, you know, that are, are kind of dormant by, by day and they're bent over and they look like trees, but by night maybe they rise up and their arms come to life and you can see them come up it would be really cool to bring these guys to life and create creatures out of them it's awesome I love finding old burls in trees burls are like old lesions that have healed over the trees grown around them and created these great shapes so often you can find faces and all kinds of really cool stuff but if you look right here it's all kind of contorted and, and, and kind of grotesque but you get some really great senses of like a face or something in there it's very very cool Okay, so one of the things I love, among other things, obviously, is just all the life everywhere. Look at this oak tree. This, this is a live oak and all these little ferns growing on top. I can just imagine these as little creatures that, you know, when they bend over and they, they, they kind of lay into the wood, they blend in. But as, as soon as you walk away, they stand up and they have these little ferns growing off of them. That can be really cool, a really fun little creature to create. I just want to go back to the studio and draw them. Check this out. Okay, so we've come out here and, and you know I've shown you all the different things that inspire. Now the next step, what I like to do is I like to pull out my sketchbook. And when I see things that inspire me, maybe just jot down, just even if they're little scribbles, jot down little ideas for creatures. And in this case, I've been looking at these air plants up here, these uh, epiphytes, and I thought, man, what a cool little headdress that might be. You know, for a little creature that lives in the trees and crawls along the crawls along the trees. So I'm doing a little sketch right now, very scribbly sketch, but something that only takes about five minutes, and I can just throw it in here really fast, and I'll have an idea for when I get home of what this little creature could be. And here I'm imagining, like this is the crazy hair on top of this little creature who crawls along the tree and looks for insects and that sort of thing, but they're like little people. And there's the eyes right here. And we just see 
creature walking along the branch. I think that can be really cool. Okay, so we've been out here, we've gone all over the place, really had a wonderful day searching for textures and being inspired and I'm sitting here now in my last little spot, I found a beautiful spot on this beach along the river and um, I really love these palm trees that I see right here, I just love their shapes, sable palms here in Florida are just so beautiful and so I just wanted to get a couple of last minute sketches in but now I think it's time to head back once I get these done. We're gonna head back to the studio and I wanna start kind of digesting everything and start brainstorming some new creatures. We're gonna work digitally. And uh, so why don't we head back and uh, I'm gonna finish this up. I'm gonna get back onto my, uh, back to the truck. We're gonna head back to my studio and I'll meet you back on my Cintiq. Okay, so let's do one more. I wanna go back to um, when we got, we we're getting that inspiration out in the woods and I was doing the sketching, um, I, I really want you guys to go out there and do the same thing. I want you to go out, I want you to get inspired, I want you to sketch. Then I want you to bring those sketches back in. Uh, so I, th I thought it'd be fun to finish it off with some of the drawings that I had done. I, I, I had sketched kind of this old knot, you know, in the tree. Um, and I got some very quick inspiration from the air plants that were out there and maybe some of the little uh, creatures that uh, the air plants, the, those bromeliads, those epiphytes, could maybe be part of their hair or their head or something like that. And I thought that could be kind of fun. And I wanna do something finished with that using this inspiration that I got out in the forest. So let's jump over to the screen. And that knot, that tree knot, uh, my son Dustin got a really great shot of it. And I thought it would be really cool to lay a creature kind of coming out of it, maybe looking around and starting out the day, uh, looking outside. And so I did a quick sketch over the top of it, just in preparation for this, wanting to get, make sure that we were prepared. And also, I've also got some reference right here. Here's some reference of um, some of the air plants are on that same tree. And you can see we got some really great color here, some great textures. That would be a great kind of headdress hair coming up out of the creature's head. So that being said, I want to take this and we're just going to put it up here for now. And this is going to be my inspiration right up there. And what we've got here is a... Um, I, like I said, I did a very quick sketch of this little creature looking out. Um, it's a little different than what I drew in my sketchbook, but I think this, for the photo, um, is going to be a lot of fun. I liked how simple the photo is. I really like the... Uh, it really just provides a great stage. We might darken behind the, the stump a little bit, maybe push the depth of field to focus a little bit more on the stump itself or on the tree itself. But I just thought, man, you know, this could be really neat sticking out. You can't really see it that well with the, uh, without the gray. But, um, and I did some real quick scribbling over it, um, just wanting to get that sense of, of hey, it's a new day, you know. And, um, and uh, I just wanted to create something really kind of cute right here. And so... With that in mind, I want to come in and just kind of scribble in what some of these 
air plants might look like. And notice how I'm doing it very and very loose, and I'm letting them go right off the page. Keeping it smooth, those nice, long, smooth transitions, tra uh, 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 lines. So all I'm doing here is just putting variations in the local color. Getting these to overlap a little bit better. And what we're going to do is just get in there and have some fun with shadow, light and shadow. Remember, these are all supposed to be hidden. They're all supposed to, in my theory, they're all creatures that we've never really discovered before because of this ability for them to blend in, for them to mimic their backgrounds. Just adding little markings, keeping it light and quick. All right, well, we're getting there. Let's put another. Um, layer behind, set that to multiply again, and I want to do uh, another cool shadow, and uh, we'll do it with that, and I want to kind of bring it in this way. Let's see if that works. I'm uh, not sure if I like that. I'll get it to read. We'll get it to read. Well, I think we've got a nice start. We've got a fun little headdress, fun little character. And um, uh, I want to, you know what, I'm going to make those arms darker. To, I know the idea is to get them to blend, but I want to, I think I want them to, uh, I want them to stand out against the background. So that being said, I'm doing that. And we'll just let it fade out. There we go. See how dark you can get that really quickly. So you want to be careful that you don't go too dark too fast. There we go. All right. So one of the things I can do is I can just go in here 
and I can darken areas as much as I want because I'm using the blend mode on the brush. Just like that. There we go. There. Creepy little thing, isn't it? <laughs> There we go. There. Feels much better. And you get a little bit more control like this. There. So I'm looking at some of my reference of some of my little bromeliads, the epiphytes here. I want to put some darks right in there. There we go. That we can start to get depth right in there. And what's nice about being able to do it this way and locking that layer is that I can go in and I can add. Well, let me take away that bottom drawing there. I want to get rid of that. But I can add um, shadow on some of these guys here just darken them right up no problem and get them to read against that sky see it's a it's a nice way to do it Like that. Let's get into the body. It's going to paint. Um, right now, I'm going to just go right over the tops of the of the leaves coming down in front of the body right here, and then we'll. We'll correct that later. Let's go to our spacing, pull that together. There.
I'll have that go in the shadow back there. Just bring it out. There we go. Whoops. Go back to our paintbrush. Once again, keep in mind I'm writing that the brackets are our shortcut, the hot keys for the brush size. And I'm writing that back and forth, up and down. There. Now one of the things I want to do is I want to unlock this. And I want to come in and kind of fill out some of these areas just a little bit more than what's there. I'm going to take this off of multiply. Take that off of lock. Just fill this out. Just a little bit more. What I'm trying to do really is clean this up. I'm cleaning up the edges on here. mainly along there up here too I got to get it get these transitions nice and clean It's not so bad there. That feels a little better. I just want to make sure we get this all. Well, let's get that ear fixed too. Let's relock it. I want to go back to kind of a cooler green and let's go back to multiply. We'll just start hitting some of these areas a little better. Nice transition. There we go. All of this is, you know, you really want to get value. You really want to pay attention to your value, your light and dark. Okay. Um, I've quickly laid in some shadow here. And so now, um, let's quickly lay in 
really quickly. Let me get this a little darker. Um, we'll start laying in some highlights. Like so. Actually, those are a little dark. I'm going to go a little smaller on them. See, if you got to be really careful to make sure you don't go too dark on these, you know, when you're doing your brush blend mode. Because like I said, it can just go darker and darker and darker and darker. Until it's too dark. go okay so he's starting to pop out pretty nice so let's put another uh, we're gonna keep this we're gonna keep this layer and um, now we're gonna go to a warmer color um, maybe not so bright and let's go to overlay let's do the same thing Now let's, I don't want it to be so, uh, I'm going to gray it out. I don't want it to be too yellow. Not yet. There we go. Let's go with the green. And right under here, I can put reflected light, like on the shoulder. We just keep going back and forth. On this jaw underneath See this is how we get a little bit of variation happening in the in here There we go Some of these will get really bright See, it'll just get brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter if I let it. Just like that. Which is okay. There. Some nice brightness coming around. It gives it a nice effect, a nice 3D effect. There. There we go. Go ahead and get the body. There. See how already, already, just by using that blend mode um, on the brush instead of the layer, it's a whole different ball game, isn't it? Flop it around just to see how it looks. 
That, that looks like fun. Let's see here. One thing we need to do is unlock that. Grab that. Put this back to normal. Let's just color that. Color that right in. All right. Now I want to go back there. We'll go back to overlay. Actually, let's go back to uh, multiply. I like to go back and forth. So uh, we're going to go back to a cooler green. Go a little darker with it. And I'm going to put a little tapered point on my brush because what I want to do is get a little darker on the eyebrows. There we go. And let's lock that layer. We're going to lock that and come down into here. I'm going to bring my opacity up just a touch. So just giving them little details. But we're going to kind of open them up a little bit. There we go. I like some of these details. It just gets it a little tighter. And I want it, what I want to do is go in on some of these uh, on the underside of some of these leaves here and just get them a little darker. There we go. Get a little darker back here. So now where everything was flat color before, now what we're doing is we're building up a variety of values, light and dark values. It creates depth inside our little character here. We can get nice and dark with it. One of the things I'm really glad we did was um, take what inspired, you know, I, I'm really glad um, I saw this creature out there with you in, in tow, with you with me, and was able to come back to the studio and create it. Yeah, because it's, it's kind of a big deal. It's kind, of, it's kind of fun to be able to do that and be inspired like that. And so I want to make sure that you are able to, to kind of see that. And we can just keep working this, you know, right over the, the highlight layer and then over the, the dark layer. And we just keep working these values back and forth until we have something that feels pretty good. The other thing too, is you want to make sure you don't forget your hands. You don't have to go really tight. But don't forget them. There. <laughs> there we go.
So I'm just going through and finding where the shadows would be. In this case, it's ambient light. It, he's, he's already kind of in, there's not a lot of direct shadow. There's might be a little bit of like a, a little dappled light on him right here. Maybe there's a little bit of dappled light right there. There. And let's go back to warm. And let's go back to uh, uh, overlay. I want to get that nice and hot right through here. And you see, because we've locked it, we can do that. Get some of these edges. Look at that. You can pull some nice edges in here. Now, if I turn off the, the drawing layer altogether, you can start to see where we need to add some definition. One of the things I want to do is add some definition to the underside of this arm. There we go. Just like that. We'll get some along here. And what we're going to do is we're going to push some of this out of focus as well. Getting some nice definition going on. There, getting him to pop right out, and then we're gonna add, we're gonna start adding some texture on here as well. Let's um let's get up here and get some of these leaves a little better. Like so. There we go. Bring these in right here. Pull this in a little tighter. There. Now, I'm going to put a layer on top. I want to start defining this a little bit. Um, one thing I want to do is get some nice... Uh, I'm going to grab some of this color over here. I want to uh, get a little bit of glassiness on the eyes. So I'm going to add a layer on top. And I'm just going to lightly add this reflection of the sky right over the top of the eye. Just like that. You can see there's a little bit of reflection of the eye. Very, very glassy. And I'm just going to go warmer 
and a little brighter. I'm going to hit that a little harder, just a touch. Bring the eye there. And then I'm just going to go really warm, really bright, and add the highlight. And add a little bit of a highlight here, a little glint. Right underneath. See that? And then underneath this layer, I'm going to put another layer. This is a this is the highlight the uh, highlight uh, eye highlight. There we go. Whew, couldn't talk. Let me double click that. Eye highlight. This is going to be the. Uh, the iris color. Okay, so let's get in here. I want to get in and um, go a little darker with it, a little deeper. And right where the reflection is, I'm going to add a little darkness, a little bit of darkness coming around on the eye. Same thing over here. Just a touch. And then on this part of the eye, I'm going to go really bright with it. Because the light is hitting. Think of the iris as like a bowl. And so with the light being in the upper right, that right side of the iris goes into shadow while the left side of the iris gets highlighted. So now we've got some eyes that are really standing out kind of nice. See there? And it's, it's basically reflecting the, the, you know, the sky around it. Now I want to kind of do the same thing. I want to grab some of this color out here. Um, some of that light blue gray. And I'm going to put a layer on top. And this is going to be the rim lighting or reflected light. All right. And it's I want to get some of this blue into the color on the on our little creature so some of this nice cool color we're going to go a little brighter with it So I'm just really trying to get a few darker areas in here. Looking at the reference and it really, you can really see some nice darks in some of the shadow areas. And I don't want to be too afraid to just get in there and make it dark. You can always paint over it. That's the beauty of digital. Remember that. Here's some darks back here I want to hit. A lot of this is going to blur out as well. There we go. There. Let me pull back on that a little bit. There. I'm liking those eyes. Let's get in there on the fern now. Let's go to uh, overlay, and I just want to get really kind of bright with it. And we're going to add some texture on this fern. 
on these ferns. There. You can see by having that layer locked, you don't really have to worry about the edges. And by painting in a different blend mode, you can add light very subtly. And it starts to give it a kind of a, new, a cool feel. There we go. I'll bring up that opacity a little bit. There. So you can see how this starts to give it, as I run along the edges of some of these, it starts to give it a little bit of depth and interest. See that? There. See, this method really allows you to paint a little quicker. And get some nice, interesting effects a lot quicker. I'm really kind of creating depth. There we go. Without really trying. We're just varying up. The key is paint, put your, your, your brush over here in different blend modes. Overlay and multiply. I'm in overlay right now. And then lock your layer once you have your color down. And so now I'm not painting outside of what I've, I've painted already. It allows me, especially on these long, thin, wispy parts of the air plant, it allows me to create some nice effects. There we go. And all I'm really doing here is I just want these to read against the background, so I'm lightening them up. And we're going to go in and blur some of them as well. Now here, I'm going to jump up to the reflected layer. We've got some nice stuff going, you can see here. We might want to add a little bit of brown, some sharper, some sharper, uh, darks as well. But right here I want to smooth this behind out. I'm going to come back to normal. here we're going to get a little reflected light
There. Very simple. Now I go a little brighter with it. There we go. Very nice. See how simple we can make that. Let's go back in. Let's go back to our... Uh, I'm going to go a little darker. Let's go back here. We just went back to our main layer. Let's call that the main layer. All right. That was the one that's locked. And we're going to set our brush to multiply. And I want to push some of these back. Now let's do, I want to try something new. Now let's go, um, uh, let's go to our brush up here um, sorry this one let's drop down to my speckled brush that we made and I'm going to take that off of color dodge right now set it at overlay no set it at uh, multiply about 41% I'm just going to add a little bit of texture on him, her. See that? Let me blow that up. Just adding some nice subtle texture that makes it feel just a little more earthy. Let's go to overlay. Now we can do the same thing, but the opposite with the overlay. We get nice textures. Look at that. I like that. It's not hard to do. See that? Just gives you some nice texture to kind of dig into. And it makes it feel a little more organic. That feels much more organic when you add a little bit of texture to it like that. There we go. And now I want to, uh, uh, like we did on the other ones, I'd like to go ahead and add some markings. So I'm going to, this time, let's try setting the layer to overlay for the markings. And let's go kind of dark with them. I want to go with the brown. And I just want to see what it's going to do. Let's go back to our hard round brush and we're going to set it to normal. Let's bring that opacity up to about 67%. I go a little darker with it. There we 
we go. Kind of like this. Do a little ring around the eye. There, just bring a little more attention to the eye. There we go. How's that look? That feels pretty good. I like that. There we go. Almost there. See how quickly this one's going? Yeah, we got a little bit of a different technique. Just add some blotches. Like she's mimicking some of the some of the growth around there. There. It's got a really nice feel to it. go and then right down the arms bingo Get some more color in some of these. While we're in this mode, I want to get some more color up in these uh, some of these leaves. There. There we go. That's feeling pretty good. I like that. Now let's, um, I want to hit some of the, I want to clean this up a little bit. We're almost there. We're kind of in the home stretch for this one. Just turn it around. So one of the things I want to do is I want to start blurring out uh, a couple of areas in the background and um, I want to hit some nice highlights on, I want to catch some edges a little bit better on some of these uh, leaves. So I'm going to create a layer on top, define edges, I'll call it that. I'll just call it that and uh, I'm going to grab some nice light color. Let's set that to about 83%. And just go ahead, going to go ahead and define edges with that. There we 
go. So this is slowly coming together right here. What we're going to do, once I get this laid in, we're going to combine the, the layers and we're going to push some of these leaves out of focus. And that's really going to kind of push the, uh, the depth. go there's our little character right there that feels pretty good let's get some nice go so just adding a little texture right along the tops of the, the tops of these branches right here right on the head getting in here and defining edges will add depth All right, so one more thing I want to do, I'm going to go underneath our character layer and um, we're going to set that to, we're going to set that layer to multiply. Uh, I'm going to get into a kind of a cool shadow and uh, we're going to put shadow onto the tree branch. There, very subtle. We don't need a lot. There we go. And uh, let's go ahead and save this because we haven't yet. Save as uh, air plant. Creature. And we're going to save that right in our, let's go, I'm going to go right to our creature design 
folder. Save that right there. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to come in here and um, I want to grab my main layer and my define edges and we're going to put them into a folder just like we've done before. I'm going to copy that folder, turn the original off, and I'm going to merge that group. So now you can see we've got everything on one, one layer, okay? Um, so now what I want to do is I'm going to grab our smudge tool and we're going to grab our airbrush tool right here, our soft brush. And we're going to make it kind of large. And we're just going to start pushing some of our depth of field. So the hand kind of fits back there. Let's push maybe the butt a little bit out of focus. Just like that. And then let's take some of these right here. Whoops. Smudge tool. And we'll just take them right out of focus. Push them way back. Look at that. knock this one out of focus because it's coming towards us it's breaking that 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 plane that focus plane same with this one now where it gets a little tricky is where it's sitting over the top of the body one of the things we can do is I can create a, another layer underneath and just go ahead and and blur it out whoops and then I can come back if I turn this on I can come back like this and just erase away the areas that I don't want to be blurred. Like so. So we've got some depth right there. Uh, layer. Let's merge the layers. There we go. There, we just want this feeling like it's coming forward. There's one way in the background. That one's actually not too bad. Let's give Let's go back here and give this a little bit of blur. Just a touch. So our depth of field isn't that shallow. But we do want some of these guys way here in the background to be pushed out of focus.
Look at that. Nice depth of field. There we go. This all feels nice and grungy. There. We're getting good depth. There we go. Look at that. We got a little creature. So let's go. I'm going to put a layer on top. We're going to set that to multiply because I do want a little bit more attention uh, brought to our creature. So um, I'm going to uh, do an overlay gradient layer and we're just going to do like we do. We're going to get a little darker down here just to bring in a little bit of a little bit more attention to our character. Let's put this up on top so he pops out. All right. Maybe a little bit more Oops, Z. Let's try this again. A little bit more under here. See, that gets, in the, gets her to pop a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That feels pretty good. Now you can see where I was drawing on top of the, the uh, bark. Now that that's, now that's too, um, too late. So I'm going to go to that layer and just erase it out. There. No problem. So now, now we got something that feels pretty good. Now one more thing I'd like to do, maybe hit it, uh, it might be too much because this is all kind of feeling in shadow. Um, but I'd like to try burning it in a little bit on around the eyes and, and that sort of thing, just to see if we can get a little bit more heat on it. Uh, so what I'd like to do here, let's save it. And uh, I'm going to just copy it. Kind of like, well, that's probably a little too strong. Just copy it. Um, and... I'm going to go back to my smudge tool because I want to blur this out. For some reason, this one's bugging me. I want it to be blurry. There, it gives us a little more depth. There, look at that. Okay. So, our little air plant character is feeling pretty good. Um... So let's uh, let's try burning it in, like I said. So um, let's double that one up, and we're gonna go to our brush and set it to color dodge. We're gonna drop that down to about ten percent. We're gonna get a nice warm kind of orangey color, and. Let's just try hitting that just a little bit, just to see what happens. So we're just brightening it up, brightening it up. A couple of little areas here. How 
does that feel? Pretty good. Not too bad. There we go. Now I'm going to play with the gamma. I'm going to go up to the exposure and and the exposure here. What well, too much? Push the gamma a little bit more. Pull it back a little bit. Push the exposure a little more. How's that feel? Let me flop it. And there's yet another creature we've got done. So we've got some nice depth in that air plant. I think there are a couple, there's a couple more spots I want to just, because it's flattening out for me. Just want to soften them up a little bit. There we go. There we go. Let's go back to Color Dodge. And I want to go, let's just flatten everything. So we're going to create a new background. We're going to put it right here, right about there. Oh, I got to put it, I got to bring my, this part up. Actually, what does that look like? Does that look good like that? I wonder. There's that. Oops. Where is it? There it is. That doesn't look bad, does it? Let me see. Let's bring that back around. Let's see if I want to keep the darkness or not. Wow. Now I can't, I can't, uh, I'm having a hard time kind of judging it. Maybe it's just down a little bit more. If it's off altogether and I pull out, or if it's on and put it up to 100%, it definitely reads better like this. I think I'll stick with this. Although, you know, you could go either way with it. But there is something, you know, my eye goes right to where the area of highest contrast is. And that is right where that character is. So we're gonna, I'm going to bring everything up to here. I just covered up the shadows. There's the shadows. So let's bring this down to here. And bring these shadows right up underneath. And then here, I'm going to grab all of that. Whoops. We're going to grab all of this and just put it into a folder and create a copy. And we're going to merge that. So now everything is on one layer. You can see right there, everything's on one layer. And what I want to do is go back up to my brush here and everything's on, it's on color dodge. And let's just see if we can brighten up a couple of areas here just to match our character. Just brightening up some of this tree trunk.
There we go. Beautiful. I like it. And there is our little air plant creature. That was a lot of fun. And the whole course was fun. I was so happy to have shared this with you. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned something. Really, the biggest thing to learn out of this course is how to get out and be inspired in nature and take it back to the studio and create. Come up with things that you've never thought of before. Come up with things that people have never seen before and be, you know, be inspiring because that's what this is all about. It's really a lot of fun to do this. And um, like I said, I'm really happy that I've been able to share it with you. Um, so there we are. There's our, our little air plant epiphyte <laughs> creature. Remember, this is something that I got inspired to start sketching while we are out there walking the river. And now here we are sitting back in the studio and we've created this little, this little guy. Um, this was a lot of fun. This whole course was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for purchasing it. I hope uh, this has given you some tools to go out and do some more. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. I think it's going to be beautiful. I'd love for you to send them our way. Um, and with that, go out, put some beauty back in the world, <laughs> create some beauty from beauty that's already out there. And I will talk to you next time. Thanks. Bye.